In this episode of Secret Files, we're going to be talking about the historical beef and breakdown of relationship between Hugo Weaving and director Michael Bay. Bay was responsible for the first five installments of the live action franchise, three of which had Hugo Weaving as the voice of Megatron. In the fourth and fifth movies, Frank Welker returned to the role of Galvatron and eventually reprised the voice of Megatron. Welker was of course the voice of Megatron in Transformers Generation 1. So why didn't Hugo Weaving continue to voice Megatron in Transformers 4 and 5? In an interview with Collider on October 15, 2012, Weaving was asked if Michael Bay had called him about the next Transformers movie. In his response, Weaving decided to open up about his experience with Transformers and his not so much relationship with Michael Bay. No, Weaving said, that's a weird job for me because it honestly was a two hour voice job, initially. I was doing a play and I actually didn't have time. Anyway, it was one of the only things I've ever done where I had no knowledge of it. I didn't care about it. I didn't think about it. They wanted me to do it. In one way, I regret that bit. I don't regret doing it, but I rarely do something if it's meaningless. It was meaningless to me. Honestly, I don't mean that in a nasty way. I did it. It was a two hour voice job while I was doing other things, of course. It's a massive film that's made masses of money. I just happen to be the voice of one of the iconic villainous characters. But my link to that and to Michael Bay is so minimal. I've never met him. I was never on set. I've seen his face on Skype. I know nothing about him, really. I just went in and did it. I never read the script. I just had my lines and I don't know what they mean. That sounds absolutely pathetic. I've never done anything like that in my life. It's hard to say any more about it than that, really. Weaving's comments didn't go unnoticed by the Transformers director, and Bay took to his blog to take Weaving to task for complaining about a very well-paid job. Here's an extract from Bay's blog, posted October 18th, 2012. Do you ever get sick of actors that make 15 million a picture, or even 200,000 for voiceover work that took a brisk one hour and 43 minutes to complete, and then complain about their jobs. With all the problems facing our world today, do these grumbling thespians really think people reading the news care about the trivial complaints that their job wasn't artistic enough or fulfilling enough? I guess the Hollywood Reporter thinks so. Bay's blog rant continues. What happened to people who had integrity, who did a job, got paid for their hard work and just smiled afterwards? Be happy you even have a job let alone a job that pays you more than 98% of people in America. Without naming any names, but it's pretty obvious who Bay's aiming at, he takes one more explosive shot. I have a wonderful idea for all those whiners. They can give their unhappy job money to a wonderful elephant rescue. It's the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Africa, and I will match the funds they donate. After this exchange, Weaving was never cast as Megatron again, and you might think the beef was over, or the two may have reconciled in years to come, but that doesn't appear the case. In an interview in December 2018, Weaving doubled down on his comments about the franchise, and still appears to be disappointed at Bay and his Transformers experience. Megatron, that that was the, pretty much the only thing. I never met the director, and it was for me a voice job, and I hadn't read the script, and they kept coming back to it. It was the only time I'd never read a script for something I was doing, never. I literally went in and did the lines on the day and didn't know what they were. So that was a very, very peculiar process for me. Uh, Red Skull is revisited, there's a very complex reason why I didn't do that, but uh, I won't go into it now. Surprisingly, this time, Bay didn't respond. Maybe he just hasn't seen the interview, but it's likely if he had, it no doubt would have sparked another round of verbal sparring. So who do you think is in the right? And who is in the wrong? Was Michael Bay's handling of the role of Megatron correct, with Weaving never meeting the director? This to Weaving created a disconnect from the role, with not even being given the full script. He was just expected to show up, record his lines, and be done with it. With him having no connection to the role, I feel he did a great job, but it could have been even better if Bay had worked with Weaving to create an attachment to Transformers. What's interesting is in a behind the scenes of the voice acting for Transformers 2007, Bay is seen giving direction to Peter Cullen, but no other voice actors. 
which I find a little odd. Why didn't he give the same direction to weaving? What's also odd is that Weaving voiced not one, not two, but three Transformers films before these issues about the recording process arised. In support of Bay, you could see it that he paid Weaving well to do a job, and he did it in the most non-time consuming way, with the results being very good. It was hardly a painful job for Weaving either, close to two hours of voice acting for hundreds of thousands of dollars, and again, to refer to the BTS, it seems although Weaving was alone, he was having a good time whilst voicing Megatron. So there you have it. Make sure to let us know your thoughts of the historical beef between Hugo Weaving and Michael Bay in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode of Transformers Secret Files, be sure to drop a like on the video. And until the next one, thanks for watching.